shows us that there is a lot of interest in um, having a beautiful landscape in front of your house and maybe a, a new way of thinking about water use. Um, Steve initially and had contacted the landscape architecture department to find out if there was interest in being part of this project. To be able to, when you know, as homeowners, if you you know look at your your front yard and you think, what can I do to make save water? And you don't know what to do. What we're doing is we're giving you some ideas. One of the other things that's going to come out of this, maybe it wasn't said explicitly, is that the students are also putting together a little booklet. And that's where all of the information is going to be. So in addition to the designs, there's going to be a booklet that's going to have that you'll be able to get from the office, I imagine, once it's published. So as Steve mentioned, what we are right now is we're in the middle of the semester. I have seven students in the class. As Steve said, it's a mixture of graduate students and seniors, I believe, right? Seniors, yes. <laughs> and what I've asked them to do for this midpoint is to each of them has to come up with their own scheme. And I asked for very, very different schemes. And as you look at them and you listen to the presentations, you'll see there's a really wide variety of ideas to give you just lots of things to think about. Um, after, so each student will give you a brief presentation about the aspects and elements of his or her design. And then we have, as I said, we have this little survey that we'd like to have so we can have your input to take back with us. And after the presentations, the students will each stand, it'll be like a poster session at a conference, will stand by their projects and you can go and ask questions, give them your input, and the more input the better. This is your community. We want to do things that are going to be the way you want them to do, to be. And um, I guess that's it. So why don't we get started? And we'll start on this side with um, this is Maggie's design, and you get to use the microphone now too. <laughs> I'm so nervous. <laughs> Season that is so boring. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, so this semi-private garden, you can just imagine that um, it, it is not create a barrier uh, from your house. If you if you sit beside your uh, window, you look to tour outside, you still can see a little bit of the of the street. But obviously, actually, you, what you see is mostly it's your beautiful garden. So you pay a little bit effort uh, to, to do the maintenance. Usually, you, you need to uh, maybe uh, cut down the uh, the, spike, the, the spikes of when they down flowering. Then they will re, uh, re, re grow. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> they will re grow every year. Yeah, and then enjoy this beautiful garden. That's all. Thank you. Hi everyone, it's really great to be here. My name is Han. I actually live uh, in the city next to San Lorenzo, which is San Diego. I'm so glad to be here with you guys. And um, compared to Maggie's uh, garden, mine is actually simple and monocolor rather than like multicolor within seasons. I'm trying to make it really simple and kind of uh, organic rather than kind of natural rather than uh, formalized. And uh, I'm with, I, as, um, for me personally, I actually really like lawn, and then I really want to keep the feature of the lawn. Uh, this is actually, uh, this part is actually kind of look like lawn, but I use another, another different species, which is uh, Dimondia. It can save uh, much more water, but it has a feature like lawn. And um, for my garden, I really uh, want to really want to focus the focus on the intersection of uh, sand, uh, grass, sand, and water features. The water features is uh, just dry landscape is uh, paved with uh, dark uh, pebbles rather than. Water, so it gives you an uh, idea of water, but um, it's not, it's actually dry. It's a payment of a small river, a stream. And I use one of the strawberry tree uh, as, a, as a specimen. It has really nice um, bark, which is uh, orange and uh, pink. And for the, for, I'm, I'm really trying to show some. Uh, a range difference in elevation. So um, this this three are manzanitas. Uh, the cultivated paradise is much uh, taller compared to the ground cover. So if you you will have kind of uh, some elevation changes rather than just a lawn. And for for just for summer inches, I put in a summer snow uh, next to the log rocks so that you will you will see the white bloom during summer. This is uh, probably the only flower and and with the society society garlic they are the two major flowers here. And and the the most important piece are the rock which is is really low maintenance as well. <laughs>
Um, they're evergreens, so they'll stay green all year. They're really hardy. They're kind of like beginner, intermediate, everything proof. It's really hard to kill them. They're really low maintenance, <laughs> which is good. It's hard. Um, this is a Western Redwood, and it really is that bright pink. It has these beautiful, like, silver bark. So even when the leaves or the flowers fall off, the leaves fall off, it's still very pretty. Um, and then down here in the front, I come up with like a wildflower theme, the California poppy, our state flower. Um, very hardy plant, it's green and it's pretty low. Um, and I put it down here by these kind of like flagstone, brick, whatever you prefer, paving. Um, so that way if anything, passing by animals, children, it's pretty tall, like it's tolerant. So <laughs> if something happens to it, it will stay alive, it will re-bloom. And then back here is kind of up to you on preferences. I went with blue-eyed grass and Douglas iris, which are beautiful, like purple and green uh, flowers. They're annuals, so you'd have to replant them, but that's kind of why that's up to you as far as your preferences. And for the ground cover, I went with mulch because there's a lot of local like tree cutting and whatnot. You can get it for a really, really inexpensive price. In addition, I made sure, I actually <laughs> checked on the way here, all these plants are available at the Home Depot in San Leandro, so really accessible. Um, they're not very expensive, especially with the wildflowers. You can just buy seeds and look them up in the following year. And it's definitely drought tolerant because that's what we're going for. Hello, uh, my name is Kathleen. My theme uh, was the desert garden. and. Like Maggie was saying, when you first think of a desert, you think of this barren, one half is here sort of landscape. And I tried to go the other direction and make a more lush, full desert garden using uh, succulents and grasses and sedges and such other things that will provide year-round color. And the variety of plants has that I've chosen um, has a it varies in size. Uh, texture with like some are broad broadly succulents and some are thin or spiky. Um, and I in my plan I showed the pathway um, it would be redoing the steps but it's easily can convert to just uh, just stepping stones. Um, and the reason that I did that was to kind of create this sloped garden up to your house to create um, more privacy and more of like a like a elegant entrance into your yard. Um, so yeah, I I started out with lower plants and kind of went up higher. And you've got uh, accent marks in different areas and boulders to create kind of this more mounded landscape. Um, yeah, I provided. Uh, we noticed that a lot of houses all have uh, hose bigots in the center of the house, so I provided access to that and create, kept pathways using decomposed granite or some other material of your choice to have access for um, your trash or recycling or whatever. Um, and uh, I also, for privacy reasons, uh, put higher plants on the edges here, lower towards the driveway to kind of create your own private little space. Hi guys, my name is Rebecca, um, and my sort of theme for my garden was uh, clean and modern. And so the plant palette that I chose is mostly um, bluish, silvery green, with white and burgundy accents. Um, the first element that I utilized, you can see here in the elevation, is these um, somewhat short one to two and a half feet uh, planter walls. And this helps to break up the flatness that some of you guys have um, in the, the front lawn area in front of the homes. Uh, there's also a pathway that leads to the door and some of the plant palette that I utilized, I did um, a, a smaller plant palette, but repetitive, so that you have a sense of movement as you go through the space. Um, and then one unique thing about the design is that um, we've taken the, the downspouts and brought them down to the ground level, or 
about the level that you could touch. And um, so when it rains, you'll see the water going through um, a rill, which is like a small um, little, <coughs> basically like a downspout, but decorative. Um, and it goes into a planter here that allows the plants to use the water um, instead of it going into the street. So it's a, it's a way to conserve water. Um, some of the plants that I use, manzanita trees here, um, silver carpet is a ground cover. It's a silvery, um, short grass-like. And some rushes, um, and then a few flowers of pinstamon, um, and robicia, I think it's called. But yeah, just clean lines, um, low maintenance, and this is kind of opposite of Maggie's for somebody who doesn't really have, want to have to do a lot of maintenance and the plants are pretty tidy. Like lemon tree and pomegranate. 
and incorporate them in a more formal shape of design. Um, so you can cook with them, make tea, and everything. And also a very important issue is catching the water that runs down from the roof. So I made a catchment basin uh, made of pebbles. Um, so it will catch all the water that runs from the roof, will soak into the garden, and will help water the plants around it. Um, and when it's dry, it will also have a, a feeling of a more watery area, even though there's no water in it. Um, and a path, a straight path that cuts through the wavy bands. And I know the trees vary in, uh, in their area, where they planted in the garden. Um, so this design can be modulated to fit wherever the tree is. That's it.